Thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. Well, this topic, it's not going to go away anytime soon. It's a very important topic to a small group of individuals. And perhaps you have heard about it in the past, about the world's first artificial womb facility. Now, apparently it was dubbed as a big hoax. It was only a concept and it was completely debunked. But what if there really was an artificial womb facility, a mini mall or a kiosk for parents to be who wanted to plan to plan designer children or a place for women who didn't even want to go through a pregnancy or for those who are infertile or for an option for women who have some sort of a reproductive cancer? Or what about homosexuals who want to genetically create a child with their shared genetics? These are all very real conversations in the world of artificial wombs. And it's as though the sky is the limit with science inventions these days. Someone is on warp speed to accomplish a whole lot in the scientific realm. Scientists who do not fear God nor give him the glory for the natural way he has designed the birthing process. So scientists are on a fast track to meet a deadline. And I believe that deadline is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. What about you? Of course, the enemy has an entire army of influencers out there all over the internet, and the Lord needs his influencers out there as well. And they have written both sides of the narrative. They have thought out all the pros and cons to this conversation so carefully. I mean, they have AI. AI is alive, and it can write the news scripts around the clock and keep dishing them out to the left side and the right side of their program. And how nice of them to get the issue out on the table, forcing people to choose sides in their science freak type of a debate. Now, they want to know where humans stand on their agenda and AI helps them to tally the human's responses. Now, my heart does go out to married couples who they want to have a baby, but they cannot. But the Bible does not say, I knit you together in an artificial womb. Now, human trials of artificial wombs could start soon here in the USA. And here's what we need to know. They say that they want to reduce deaths and disability for babies born extremely prematurity. That is what they're saying their goalpost is. The problem is, as with all of these new inventions, we don't really know what this technology will be used for. Usually they say it's for one thing, and then they had some type of a nefarious plan all along. The U.S. FDA will convene a meeting of independent advisors today and tomorrow to discuss regulatory and ethical considerations and what human trials for this technology might look like. Now, the committee's discussion, it will be scrutinized by a handful of other groups around the world that are developing similar devices. There will also be bioethicists there uh, exploring implications for health equity reproductive rights uh, activist, and more. And interesting that this is during the same week that the UN convenes, and that's probably just a coincidence, I'm sure. Now, let's take a look at this, in, uh, this little image here. This team of researchers, it chose to test their system on lambs because they state that they are developmentally similar to humans. This lamb is inside a bio bag. It's a hairless, pale-skinned lamb lying on its side in a bio bag. Its eyes are closed and its snout and limbs jerk as if the animal, which is only about three quarters of the way through its gestation period, is dreaming. And according to public data, preterm lambs have survived for up to four weeks in an artificial womb. Of course, that information came out seven years ago, and I wonder if they have perfected the process now, and now 
uh, we're just not privileged to know about that accomplishment. Now, this is one of the eight lambs in the 2017 artificial womb experiment carried out by researchers at the Children's Hospital uh, of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. And their acronym, I don't like this acronym, it's CHOP. But when the team published its research in April of 2017, it released a video of their experiments. And that video uh, spread far and wide, capturing imaginations for some, evoking sci-fi fantasies of humans being conceived and grown entirely in a laboratory. Yes, very much like that motion picture smash hit, uh, The Matrix. Now, this research was done over six years ago, and I bet, I wonder if they've already perfected this technique and our data sharing with other nations where there are no legal issues to this type of experimentation. Lots of underground lab experimentation that takes place every day around the earth. So here on U.S. soil, the researchers of CHOP, they are seeking approval for the first human clinical trials of this artificial womb, and its name is Extra uterine environment for newborn development, or this acronym, EXTEND, the team has emphasized that the technology is not intended or able to support development from conception to birth. Again, I wonder if that is uh, not true. I believe they could do the whole process in there with the advancement of other technology. Instead, the scientists, this article says that they hope that simulating some elements of a natural womb will increase survival and improve outcomes for extremely premature babies. Now, in humans, uh, that's anything earlier than 28 weeks of gestation, less than 70% of the way to full term. Full term is typically between 37 and 40 weeks. Now, the leading fetal surgeon of CHOP, he said, if it's as successful as we think it can be, ultimately the majority of pregnancies, uh, they would go directly onto their system uh, rather than being delivered prematurely and placed on a ventilator. In 2019, several members of the CHOP team, they joined a startup company, and that is called Vitara Biomedical. That is also located in Philadelphia, and they have raised, uh, let's see, since then, up to $100 million to develop this technology, this particular invention called Extend. Preterm birth is the largest cause of death and disability in children under the age of five, making it an enormous global health problem. In 2020, there were about 13.4 million uh, such births worldwide, and complications related to preterm birth caused about 900,000 deaths in 2019. Now, mortality is strongly linked with the baby's gestational, gestational age at birth, and artificial womb technology aims to improve outcomes for preemie babies who are born in the period between 22 and 28 weeks, for whom survival has improved, but the long-term health issues are frequent. Now, researchers are saying that the artificial womb, it would bridge a baby born extremely premature through these days and weeks when they're most at risk for lung and brain damage. The CHOP group has signaled that it would wean babies off its system after a few weeks when their organs are more fully developed and their likelihood of healthy survival is higher. Now, the group system works by placing uh, the premature baby into what they call a bio bag. The bio bag is filled with an electrolyte laden fluid designed to imitate amniotic fluid. Surgeons would connect the blood vessels in the umbilical cord to a system that oxygenates blood outside of the body. The fetal heart would still pump blood 
as it does in the natural womb. Now, making the connection with blood vessels in this setup is very difficult uh, because the arteries are tiny and they begin to contract as the baby is delivered. So surgeons will need to hook up the blood vessels to the system within minutes, very delicate process. And since 2017, the researchers have been testing various ways to connect the animals in their experiments to the oxygenation machine. And they have been in conversation with the FDA about starting clinical trials way back then. Now, whatever happened to those eight little lambs that they did the experimentation on? Well, the team reported that it kept eight lambs alive for up to four weeks using the artificial womb. And in that time, the animals sprouted wool and their lungs and brains grew to maturity. And after four weeks, they euthanized the animals so they could study how their system affected organ development. Scientists in Spain, Japan, Australia, Singapore, the Netherlands, they are also developing artificial womb technology. And then there's another approach that is being uh, worked on here in the USA, a specialist in Michigan, but I'm not going to talk about that today. Currently, the artificial womb device designed by the CHOP team, it necessitates delivery of the baby by C-section because the umbilical arteries, they start closing quickly during birth and uh, natural labor can take a very long time. Now, the risk of an elective C-section for a pregnant person, those are not trivial and those also need to be factored into this equation. So there is a, a very big frontier of research that the FDA is going to possibly move forward with here in the USA with clinical trials. There are many ethical debates going on in the artificial womb science industry. So do you think that this is pushing science beyond the boundaries of what God has ordained? Or do you think that this is completely helpful to mankind? And then, you know, does this somehow have anything at all to do with the alien disclosure that's also going on in the news? See, we have to ask these hard questions because we are in the days of Noah that Jesus referenced in his Olivet Discourse. Evil is ex uh, escalating exponentially. Are these actually food farms? Yeah. Uh, are they food farms made to look like something else, something that would look beneficial for humans, but uh, it will actually aid the fallen ones? See, they have to try to get humanity to buy in to their technology. They have always hated mankind, and they do not come in peace. And I believe that many of them are flesh eaters, and some who already dwell on this planet, uh, they prefer to drink the blood of innocence. So something to consider. And I recall a video of a hysterical woman in Mexico. She was screaming at the top of her lungs, they eat people, they eat people. And uh, this video had to do with the child abduction narrative. They eat people. So it's out there, very disgusting. And I believe it's true. Perhaps they are making a uh, their own vending machine. I know that sounds really uh, grotesque, but friends, anyways, we are in the last days and evil is exponentially rising. We need to stay close to the Lord and in constant prayers for the souls of humanity. And we were perfectly made in the image of God and brought forth through the womb of our mother. So, Pray for all people everywhere, friends, that God will give them the grace to endure through the darkest days that are ahead for mankind. And let's live a grace-filled life, a life that is one of total surrender to the King of kings and the Lord of lords.